Whether you stream on Live 365 for fun or for profit, Music Master will help you better manage your music and create a perfect mix that will keep your audience coming back for more. You can choose to schedule your music ahead of time or use our intelligent just-in-time scheduler to continuously broadcast a perfect mix from your music library, streaming directly from Music Master to your Live 365 channel. You'll also have full access to our Music Master training consultants to help you along the way. This video will show you how to connect Music Master to your Live 365 channel, set up audio and commercial elements, and launch your stream. First, you'll need to install the Live 365 connector. You can find it on our online support center. Go to musicmaster.com and log in or create a new account. Once logged in, go to Downloads, Interface Files, and choose the Live 365 connector. Once the file is downloaded, open it to start the installation process. By default, it will be installed in the same folder where you have Music Master installed. It's recommended you keep this setting. Continue through each step until the installation is successful. Now you can launch Music Master. First, you'll need to make sure that your User Tools menu is visible so you can see the Live 365 interface icon. Go to View, User Tools, and check it on. You should now see the Live 365 icon in the toolbar. Click it and you'll open the interface dashboard. All the options will be grayed out until you've configured the settings, so let's do that now. The first section on the left has your Live 365 channel settings. You can find the information you need on your Live 365 account dashboard under Sources, Live DJ. Your station ID is the first series of letters and numbers you see after mount before the underscore live. All Live 365 channels use the stream type IceCast2, which is the default setting here. Next, copy over your host name, username, password, port, and mount. You can leave the default settings for the metadata encoding, bitrate, format, and channels, unless you have a specific reason to change them. Next, move on to your Music Master settings. Select the field you use to store artist, song title, and album title in Music Master. This information will be read from the selected Music Master fields and displayed on your station page playlist. This information is also used for Live 365's music licensing reporting, so it's important that you have this information in your music library and don't have songs with blank or untitled values. Otherwise, you might be flagged for a DMCA violation. Next, we'll set up the Music Master Player. This is the tool that will be used to play back your station and stream it to Live 365. This first box shows the location where your player configuration file, or player.ini, is stored. By default, it's located in your Music Master application folder. After you've filled in all of your channel settings, you can use the Auto Configure button to apply those settings to the Music Master player. Should you ever need to edit the file, you can click this Edit button, or you can just make the changes to your settings on the left and click Auto Configure again to update the file. Now that your configuration is complete, the Music Master player will be able to output playback directly to your Live 365 stream. But before you can do that, you need to make sure that Music Master knows where to find your audio files. Audio setup is done in the Tools menu. Select Options, Audio File Options. You'll need to construct the full file path for your audio files using a combination of text that you enter along with references to Music Master fields. Most users have a file name field where they store the audio file name or the path. Many users store the full file path in their library's audio file name field, like this. In this case, all you have to do is use the dropdown to select your audio file name field. It should end up looking like this. However, if you haven't written out the full file path in your audio file name field, you'll be able to add it here as a prefix. Type the full path first. For example, C colon backslash audio backslash. And then use the dropdown to select your audio file name field. In the end, it should look something like this. 
There are other more advanced ways you could configure the audio file path, including combining multiple fields or taking only a portion of text from a field. If you need to do this, consult Music Master support. Moving on, we'll look at how to set up ad insertion for your channel. You have the ability to schedule ad breaks for Live 365 in Music Master. You can choose to have a 30, 60, 90, or 120 second ad break, and also decide where you'd like the breaks to fall within the hour. When you install the Live 365 connector utility, you'll also get a folder full of dummy commercials, which are actually PSAs. When these commercials are scheduled, their metadata will trigger Live 365 to insert a real commercial in their place. In case there are no commercials available, the PSA will play instead. To start, open the Live 365 Connect interface and click Settings. Then click Setup Ad Insertion on the bottom left. During this process, Music Master is going to add the dummy commercial elements to a category in your library, so you can insert that category into your clocks and schedule your commercial breaks. First, you need to select a category where you want Music Master to add the elements, or you can have Music Master create a new category for you. Next, you will need to select your audio file name field. The Music Master player will need to be able to find the dummy commercial audio files, just like any other audio file. So, depending on how your system is set up, you may have to take a different set of steps here. If your library's audio file name field contains the full path to your audio files, then you can leave the dummy commercial files in the folder that was created during installation. This can be found in your Music Master application folder under Connectors, Live 365, Ad Breaks. Simply select your file name field from the dropdown and make sure that the box Save File Name Only is not checked. When this is unchecked, the entire path to the file will be stored in the file name field. On the other hand, if your file name field contains just the file name and no path information, then you'll want to move the dummy commercials to the same folder that your music is stored in. The easiest method is to just copy all the commercial audio files directly. There's no need to preserve the original folder structure. Once you've done this, go back to that Add Insertion tool. Select your audio file name field from the dropdown. Next, check the checkbox for Save File Name Only. This will make sure that only the file names are added to the audio file name field, the same way that all your other music is stored. Next, you'll need to choose the length that you want each ad break to be. Remember, if you have a commercial plan, Live365 requires you to run four minutes of commercials every hour. So, for example, you might want to do this with two 120 second long breaks or four 60 second breaks. When you're done, click Create Ad Break Elements. You can now find the dummy commercials in the category that you selected or created. Next, you will need to place your commercial breaks into your format clock. Create or edit an existing clock by clicking on this icon in the toolbar or going to the menu Dataset, Clocks, Format Clocks. To insert a commercial break, you simply need to play any element from the commercials category that you created earlier. You can do this by inserting a fixed position calling for that category into your clock. Remember, when the Music Master player encounters this element during playback, the metadata will trigger ad insertion in that position. I'm going to insert two 120 second breaks to cover my four minutes. Now we're ready to get streaming. Remember, Music Master streams audio to your Live 365 channel through the Music Master player. As long as the player is running, you will be streaming. You can launch the Music Master player from the Live 365 Connect interface by clicking Launch Player. If you've already scheduled a log for the current day, the Music Master player will begin playing that music log at the current time. However, if you do not have a previously scheduled log for the current date and time, Music Master will fill in songs on the fly by selecting a song for each upcoming position based on your library, rules, and clocks. This is a feature that we call just-in-time scheduling. 
Note that while the Music Master player is running, you won't be able to hear the audio playing back on your computer. This is because you've directed the audio to play back on your stream, not locally. However, if everything is working correctly, you'll be able to see songs from your schedule begin to appear in the player window. After a minute or so of buffering, your stream will start to play. In this top box, you'll see songs that have just played. The middle box shows the current song playing. The bottom box shows the next upcoming song. It will continue to broadcast as long as you have the player running. Even if you run past the point of having scheduled music logs, the just-in-time scheduling will take over. Once you close the player, after a buffering delay, your stream will stop. Note that in Music Master, you also have the option to export a pre-scheduled log, allowing you to import it into an automation system or a digital audio processor of your choice before streaming it to Live 365 from that system. If you need help with exporting logs or have any other questions, please contact Music Master support.